What's up everybody? Today we're going to be looking at how to model this carved or arch top guitar in Rhino 7. So I'll just go through a quick overview of the features we're going to get to in today's video. So we have uh, filleted corners on both edges of this thing. We have a pretty interesting kind of complex transition here and here on the guitar. And that's that's kind of it. It's it's pretty simple and it won't take us too long. So let's just get right into it. So first off, you can see I already have the profile of the guitar that we're going to be doing over here. This is pretty simple, but I'll just quickly go over it. So if you do background bitmap and you save a picture to your computer of a guitar profile, you could go in the top view and trace over that. And that's how I got mine. So we can just remove that. So that's how I got the profile of my guitar here. Okay, so two important things to point out before we get into this about making your profile. Where your top arch curve interfaces with where your neck would go into the heel here, that needs to match up with whatever line you have coming into that. So for here it's this straight line and over here it connects into this fillet. Now how you would do that is run an arc blend command and if you don't know what that is I'll just simulate that real quick here so we'll say these are our two arches that we're like trying to simulate right here right so when you're drawing that if I just do an arc blend command real quick I can select both of these and you see it'll give me a curve that matches these two curves okay so that's how you want to draw that up because that's going to be important when it comes to making sure that surface goes nicely. The same thing can be said with your main curve as well. You're going to want that to match up. And the other thing is this top arch profile. It can't be extending past your main body. So it couldn't be going like this, for example. You see how that crosses over right there? We can't have any of that. Even if it's by a small margin, it's going to mess up our uh, nice smooth surface in the end. So make sure that your top profile is always inside of your body profile there. And then last but not least, you can see we have this fillet on the outside here. It's small because to my understanding, whatever fillet size you have right here, uh, at the top of the horns basically that is going to limit the fillet size for the entire thing without getting into much more complicated filleting techniques so that's just something to bear in mind but that being said we're ready to get into this uh, first thing you want to know is put your profile to the top of where you want your guitar for me that is 2.1 inches up off the ground make sure you have your guitar profile scaled correctly before you start doing this, it makes everything so much easier. So my profile is 2.1 inches up off the ground and I'm going to move my main body profile down a half inch and that pretty much sets the height for our carved top. So I'm going to go for a half inch carved top. Okay, so now we basically just need to tell Rhino what we want our carved top to look like. So ideally we could just draw one profile curve here and it would just apply it to the whole thing. But Rhino is not that smart. So we have to tell it where to put all the profiles and where we want to put all those profiles is any point of this guitar where there is a quad. So that means basically a quarter of a circle, the quarter point of a circle. So for instance, we have this curve here, which you can consider a circle. And if you see in the middle of that, there's like a vertex. So if I start a line somewhere around here, it's going to tell me that there's a quad. And that's kind of what you want to go for uh, when you're getting these curves. But ideally, wherever you put our profile curves, they're going to need to be parallel to the body. And that'll just make things easier going forward as well. Okay, so I have a strap body here. So I'm going to show you where I would put the profile curves on this one. And then you can just apply the same techniques to whatever body you're working with at the time. So I'm going to start with one here right in the middle of the guitar. 
And so we're going to click. You want to make sure you have your O snaps on, and we actually want our near snap on. So we're going to snap to our upper one first, and then our lower one second, and that's going to be the same operation with all the other ones. You want to get that as perpendicular to the body as possible. So as you can see here, now we have this straight line from here to here. Now you'll notice that isn't curved, but we'll get there later. So every quad that I can find, I'm just going to want to draw a parallel line on each one, starting from the top and going to the bottom. So there you can see it actually gave me a pretty accurate quad snap, so I'll snap there. And we're just going to do that for every quad on the guitar. Now once we get up to the curves, we're pretty good here. We got all the curves we need. Once we get up to the horns of the guitar though, it gets a little more interesting. So we're actually going to need three profile curves for every point or each horn on the guitar. So it gave me some quads there. I'm just going to do a near there. Then from the midpoint, just kind of perpendicular to the profile of the guitar. So there you can see that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Three different profile curves there. All right. I'm actually going to redo that one there. Do it more towards the tip. Get that quad there. And then last but not least, we got one more quad to take care of here. And do this one a little farther back. Okay. So, as you can see, pretty much all of these are parallel to the body of the guitar. But there is a problem. These are straight, not curved. And there might be an easier way to do this, but I'm going to show you the most reliable method I know. And I might speed the video up here because it's just, it's going to be the same process, just repeated for every one of these curves. So, I'll show it to you on the main one here. So we're going to run an extend command. Click your profile curve. Okay, so first it says select boundary objects. You can just press space or enter because we don't need a boundary object. We just need the curve to extend. So we'll click the curve and drag it out just a little bit. And then do that again in the other direction. Okay. After you've done that, we're going to take a rectangle this one might not work as well because it's going through a straight line. So I'll just... Basically you want to make sure whatever box you draw contains the line that's protruding outside the profile of the guitar. And then click that box, run a planar SRF command. Now you can see we have this surface there. So next is a project command. So this is what we really wanted to get to. So we're going to grab our line, our profile curve, press space, and then select the surface we want to project that onto. So now you can see where we extrude or extended that line. Now it's flat. That's very important. So that is a flat line now. That's what we want on the outside of the guitar. And then if you go over here to our other end of the line here, we're just going to run a run trim, select the cutting objects, which in this case is the top profile of the guitar, and trim away the rest of that line. So now you can see these two lines here. Now you remember at the beginning of the video I showed you the arc blend command, and we're going to be doing that again here. So let me run an arc blend command real quick and we'll see how it looks. I run that arc blend command and I get two curves instead of one. It's a compound curve, it's not a simple curve. And we don't want that. Maybe you want that, but most people don't want that. So what you have to do is just grab your endpoint of this line right here and you can just drag it up. Don't drag it side to side, just drag it up. We can turn our grid snap off and just drag it up. I mean, you can make it as steep as you want right there and you kind of just have to eyeball that there's not really any method to the madness there you just kind of have to go to taste and then eventually once we get it to the right steepness we run the arc blend command again and that gives us a lot more of the curve we're looking for and then after you do that you can just delete these excess lines and boom now we have a profile curve so 
Needless to say, we have to do that on every one of these, which would be pretty boring to watch, so I'm probably just going to speed up the video here, and hopefully you guys can follow along and see what I'm doing, but it's going to be the same process on all of them. So let's just get that done really quick. Okay, so you can see we got all the lines extended there. That looks a little crazy right now. But as you know, the next part of this is just to draw the, all the rectangles on the outside of the curve. So let's do that really quick. Okay, so now we basically have like bounding boxes around all of our different profile curves. And this looks so crazy right now. Um, next is the, the planar SRF command. So we're just going to select all of our rectangles here. And we're going to run our planar SRF command. And that's basically just going to turn all of these different rectangles into surfaces. Okay. And then the next step there is just going to be going through and projecting all of the lines to those surfaces that we just made. There it says select curves and points to project. So I just selected all the curves. If I press space again, it's going to say select surfaces to project onto, which is all of our different rectangles that we made earlier. Make sure you're selecting the surfaces there and not the like uh, line bounding boxes we did earlier. Make sure it's that surface. Then we're just going to press space there and it's going to give us all the lines that we want. So now we can go through and delete all of those rectangles that we made earlier. It's a weird way to do it, but it works and it doesn't take very long. So I think it's it's a pretty good method of doing that. Okay, so now you can see we have all those straight lines around it now. So now we're just going to go ahead and trim everything that is below the top arc of our guitar. So to do that, just press trim. Our cutting object is going to be that top profile we made and we're just going to go around clicking these lines, getting rid of all that stuff that we don't need anymore, but everything above that line we are going to want to keep. So make sure you don't delete anything above the line. And there we go, we're done. So now pretty much all that's left is we just have to adjust the steepness of each of these curves to taste. And we're just going to start running arc blend commands all over the place until we get something we like. Okay, so I got most all of them done right here. I just wanted to stop for a little bit and point some things out that I'm going to do here. So uh, one thing that I find a little bit more useful uh, when we start transitioning into this flat section over here. Um, I'm actually going to leave this not uh, going to a flat line here. So this line's flat right now. Um, I'm actually going to be moving this down a little bit. It's just going to help us get a little bit smoother transition later. And much like the other ones, there's not really a set rule for how far to move that. You just kind of have to eyeball it. So that way... And you don't want to do it too much to where it's like a, f a flat line, but you just don't want it to go to a straight line either. So if I run my arc blend commands here and here, you also don't want that kind of complex curve either. So it's going to be a little bit more of a balancing act there, getting that right. But we can see, yeah, that looks good right there. So I just wanted to point that out because when we get done, we want to have uh, a pretty a nice smooth transition, whether you're going to be doing this on a, a CNC or you're just doing this for an appearance model. More so for the appearance model, it's kind of nice to have that nice straight connecting surfaces wherever we can. Okay, so we've got all those done. The next thing we're going to do is grab a polyline and add our endpoints here. We're just going to want to draw a straight line because we don't need any curves here. So our profile curves there will technically be straight. So we got pretty much everything we need here. So I'm just going to hold my uh, left click here and just select everything above the line there, delete it, and everything below the line. 
and we can delete all that too. And all these outside of the profile, we don't need any of that. So all those are gonna get deleted. So if you look at our profile now, you can kind of see where we're gonna have this profile ending up. Now to create this profile, we're going to want to do something called a sweep too. So first off, we want to make sure both our top and bottom profiles are all one line and they're not exploded into different line segments. Okay, so if those profiles are all one line segment, what we're going to do is we're going to do the horns first because they tend to cause some problems sometimes. So we're going to select our rails. It can be the whole thing. It doesn't matter. But when we go to our sweep shapes, we just want to select these three. That's all we need to do. You can see it makes that profile for us there and that's looking great. You can see how smooth that surface is. So we select those again and do those horns one more time there. And if we check here, you can see that surface is looking fantastic. There's no like folding over the edges or anything. Zoom in over here, hopefully. Yeah, you can see how nicely that's going and nothing's folded over, which is sometimes a problem. So now that we got those done, let's do the bottom and sides of the guitar here. So sweet shapes will start off with our horn and we can just start clicking until we end up over here at the other side of the horn and click that. And there's another great looking profile. So you can see we're really starting to get there now. And we'll just finish off the top here. Hopefully this goes smooth. These always have a slight chance of messing up, but you know, provided that you've gone through all the steps, hopefully that is not very, it's not going to impact your, your surfaces. So you can see here we end up with a really smooth transition between curves and then flat lines. So that's really important there. Alright, so we are looking really good at this point. So the next thing we're going to do is do an extrude curve and select the bottom profile there. And you're just going to want to drag that back down to your origin, but I have my snaps on and I already did one of these so I can just go over here and reference that. And then I'm going to explode this because it made a solid object and we don't want that quite yet. Or at least the top part of that we didn't want. We'll go ahead and join that extrusion and then we can run a cap command. And you can see it says resulting in one closed object and that's really important especially if you're going to CNC it has to be closed and watertight so it is closed which is great so if you don't mind doing a little bit of hand sanding on these edges here which is actually kind of preferable I think if you're going to do CNC work uh, not to put these fillets in because you can just hand sand it later or however that's going to go but for the rest of us who are doing appearance models we need things to look pretty on the computer we have to do fillets now, which is always a fun time in Rhino. We just kind of have to cross our fingers and hope this goes well. So I'm going to be selecting all of our top edges here. And when I made my sketch here, this is important to note. You can see if I go to my top view here how this is rounded off. This has to be rounded off or this just doesn't work in general. Um, but when I did round that off, I did fill it and I selected these two and for my filler radius I did 1 16th of an inch which is 0 0.0625 which you can see is the same kind of fillet edge that I'm trying to put on this whole thing and we might actually to to be safe here it's always better to do your fillet edge a little bit smaller than your smallest fillet on your sketch so I'm gonna just make it 0 .6, 0 0.062 instead of point point 0.0625 so hopefully that goes well for us here and it looks like it did we can zoom in here we see we have a smooth fillet and that's a good transition there so now when I bring this into my rendering software that's gonna have a nice rounded edge now for the bottom or this this portion of it here it's gonna be a little bit more tricky but it's still pretty doable when I do my fillet edge I'm not going to select edge that is 
ending up connecting to my flat part. So as you can see here, um, this where this line is right here, that's perfectly straight. But as soon as I get to this part, now there's like a peak. You can see that on the inside here, how there's a corner basically. And that would cause a problem if we tried to fill it that. But there's a way around it. So we're basically going to select all the edges except the ones that connect up to our flat pieces. Okay. So I'll just make my fillet there. That should go no problem. There's no reason that should fail on us. In fact, we could probably do that more if we wanted to. So let's just test out a, a 1 8 fillet for that because that might look a little bit better even. Yeah, see, so yeah, okay, so that works no problem. So you can do any size fillet you want on that. Now, where it gets tricky is this transition, but you know, I say it's tricky, but it's honestly really not that bad. So connect a line to the top part of your fillet there and hold shift and drag it across the body. So you can see that line goes all the way through the body there. And then you're going to do that again for the bottom end of your fillet and hold shift and drag over so it makes that straight line okay so now what I'm actually going to do is explode our guitar here which means I can now select the individual surfaces okay so now that we can do that I'm going to do the split command our objects to split are going to be basically these two portions of surface that didn't get filleted so after I've done select objects to split, I'll press space, I can go to this, uh, the front or back view basically and select our cutting objects as those lines there and when I press enter you can see that it made this interesting cut here you can see that happening now this is good because we can delete these surfaces and this small one here as well Okay, so now that all those are deleted, now we have a space to work with and a profile. Now there's one more thing we're going to do to make sure this really gets filleted nicely and we're going to end up with a super smooth transition here. So we're going to get a polyline and basically we're just going to connect that somewhere close to our end here. So I'm going to try it right here. And then I'm going to kind of drag straight up and where my surface is, I'll connect it there. Okay, so now I'm going to do an extract ISO curve. Okay, so now that we have both of these ISO curves here, we're going to run an arc blend and we'll just select our two there. So as you can see here, we have this interesting curve that's not necessarily great you can see it kind of bumps out and comes back in so to fix that we can grab this middle point here and drag this up until that line is now flat and you can tell when it's flat by this uh, white line on the left side here so when it is on the right side a little bit we know we're good okay so that's gonna be trying to f you don't want it too much because then things kind of look a little bit weird that looks like the best I'm getting to get so that's fine with me I have that profile the last thing we need to do is grab a polyline and connect just the the gap right there pretty much and now we're ready to run our sweep to command so this should be pretty easy we're just gonna grab these part portions that weren't filleted yet and our sweep shapes are going to be that fillet there, this profile curve we just did here, and the small straight line. So then if I press space there, you can see that we end up continuing that 1 8 fillet all the way around, and it gives us a really nice curve to work with there. Okay, so now we pretty much just have to do that to the other side. So I'll try and do this one a little bit faster because it's a little bit repetitive since we know how to do it now. And there you go. There's, there's another one done. 
See that matches up nicely. Alright, so that should be everything. Let's just take everything now and press the join button. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. So that is an arch top guitar. It's, it's a little bit tedious, but overall the, the process is pretty simple. So, of course, as always, if you guys have any other things you'd like to learn about modeling guitars or anything else for that matter, drop it down in the comments. And I, That's pretty much how I get my ideas for videos. So if you want to see something done, just, just put it there in the comments and I'll, I'll probably get to it at some point. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you click the thumbs up button because it actually does help out a lot. And subscribing makes me happy, but that's besides the point. So I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.